Good morning. Two quick announcements before we begin. Be Still, the 25th Annual Advent Festival of Carols and Scripture at the Basilica tonight, St. John Parish, sorry, Basilica Parish of St. John the Baptist, this the first Sunday of Advent. You can register at the door. Also, the Basilica Christmas Hamper Fund. The Basilica welcomes donations towards the Christmas Hamper Fund. All donations go towards purchasing gift cards for those in need. There will be envelopes available after Mass if you would like to leave a donation. Good morning and welcome to the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. We pray that you are in good health. We ask that all present respect the instructions given by our ushers and the guidelines in place to prevent the spread of COVID-19, including using hand sanitizers, maintaining a distance of two meters, and wearing face masks at all times in the church. We will not have a collection at this Mass, but there are collection boxes provided for you at the entrance and the exit of the church. Your donations pay for the utilities and salaries of the parish. Thank you for supporting our Basilica Parish. At the time of Holy Communion, we will give you further instructions. At the end of Mass, we ask you to follow the usher's directions for leaving the church. Our gathering chant is number 306 in our CBW, Come, O Long Expected Jesus. Our presider is Archbishop Peter Hunt. Please stand. Come, O Expected Jesus, born to set your people free from our fears and sins, release us, free us from captivity. Israel, strength and consolation, you the hope of all the Dear desire of every nation, come and save us by your birth. Born your people to deliver, born a child and yet a king, born to reign in us forever. Now your gracious kingdom bring by your own eternal spirit rule in all our hearts alone by your all sufficient merit raise us to your glorious throne In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. We come at the beginning of a new liturgical year, the season of Advent, to give God praise and to prepare the way of the Lord, to prepare for the celebration of the Feast of Christmas in four weeks, to prepare for the second coming of the Lord when he will come in glory, and to ask the Lord to help us to be aware of his presence among us, sacramentally and in one another. To begin this Lenten season, or this Advent season, we call to mind that these four weeks of Advent are a special time of preparation, and the Advent wreath is a special symbol for us of that time of preparing the way of the Lord. Dear friends in Christ, today we begin the... <laughs> forgot my glasses...
Dear friends in Christ, today we begin the season of Advent. It is a time of watching and waiting for the coming of the Lord. The Advent wreath reminds us of our yearning for God. Its circular shape tells us of God's everlasting love and faithfulness. Its evergreen branches tell us of eternal life and of God's desire for us to live with him forever. The four candles remind us of the passing of time, our human history into which Christ has entered through his son, Jesus. This is a time of grace, a time for a new advent of Jesus into our lives. On this first Sunday of Advent, we focus on the Lord's second coming, Let us heed the gospel words of Jesus. Be on guard, be prepared. As we light the first candle of the Advent wreath, may its flame bid us to be always ready for the coming of the Lord. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to Psalm 25, to you, O Lord, I lift my soul.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we are bound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be the blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. Finally, brothers and sisters, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus that as you learn from us how you ought to live and to please God, as in fact you are doing, you should do so more and more. For you now know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. you. 
and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to his disciples. There will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now, when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life, and that day catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. This is the time of the year when the children start beginning to ask, how, how many more sleeps, Mom? How, how close until we get to Christmas? And in a way, Advent is a time for all of us to uh, reflect on, okay, how, how long, Lord, until your second coming? How long, Lord, until you call me home? It's a time for us to be reminded that we have a God who has come and who will come again and who has called us to be with him. And between that first and second coming is that time when you and I live and when you and I are called to show back to God uh, our gratitude, uh, to show back to God that we appreciate what he has done by us by seeking to live as Jesus lived, by seeking to serve others as he has served us. Paul speaks to that in our second reading today when he speaks to the Thessalonians and calls upon them to abound in their love for one another just as he has abounded in his love for them. Advent is a special time for us to, to reflect on our Savior as, 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 a, as a gentle and loving God, as a God that came among us incarnate as an infant. It's a time for us not only to reflect on that great gift that he has given us, but also to reflect on how we give that gift back in our dealings with one another. At one point, I was stationed with a, a nun who was a Polish background, and she shared with us one time that uh, as children, the way they prepared in their home for Christmas was at the start of Advent, uh, they set up the manger scene, but without the statues. And they put a big bag of straw beside the manger. And every time one of the children did something good, every time they did a good deed for somebody, they could take one straw out of the bag and put it in the manger. And that was how they then decorated the manger, prepared the manger with the straw for the coming of the statues that were put there on Christmas Eve. It was obviously a beautiful custom and one that helped those children to realize how we prepare the way of the Lord, how we are called to be his people in the way we live. In the gospel today, Jesus speaks about the end times. He talks about how there will be terrible things, but he talks about how those terrible things then prefigure the coming of the Son of God in the cloud. And it was terrible things that happened to Jesus that then led to his resurrection from the dead and the coming of the Holy Spirit. And he warns the disciples, and with them he warns us that we've got to be on guard, that we're to stand up and raise our heads. We need to be on our toes uh, as we prepare for the way of the Lord so that we're ready when he comes. And yesterday, the last day of the liturgical year, the second reading is one of my favorite readings from St. Augustine. It's from a homily that he gave. And I think it speaks well of how we're to be on our toes and, and how we're to joyfully prepare the way of the Lord. He says, let us sing alleluia here on earth while we still live in anxiety 
so that we may sing it one day in heaven in full security. So then, my brothers, let us sing now, not in order to enjoy a life of leisure, but in order to lighten our labors. You should sing as wayfarers do. Sing, but continue your journey. Do not be lazy, but sing to make your journey more enjoyable. Sing, but keep going. What do I mean by keep going? Keep on making progress. This progress, however, must be in virtue, for there are some, the Apostle warns, whose only progress is in vice. If you make progress, you will be continuing your journey, but be sure that your progress is in virtue, true faith and right living. Sing then, but keep going. As we begin our journey through Advent season, let us rejoice in the Lord and let us sing but keep going in terms of growing closer to the Lord by the way we live and in preparing for the celebration of the birth of our Savior. God bless you. Let us stand and together profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Jesus has assured us that wherever two or more are gathered in his name, he is present in their midst. Confident of God's presence here among us, we offer to him now our prayers of petition. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and Peter, our Archbishop, that during the season of Advent, they may lead the Church in a time of renewal of our mission to proclaim Christ the light of the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we prepare our homes for Christmas, we do not forget the true meaning of Christmas and prepare our hearts so that we may welcome Christ with joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our archdiocese, as we continue to the process of renewal, that the Holy Spirit will gift us with courage and wisdom during these times of challenge and change, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who work for justice and peace and who help to feed the hungry and shelter the homeless, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our archdiocese, for the grace of discernment, that all people may encourage in the process of listening to one another as we prepare for the upcoming Synod of Bishops, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families divided by quarrels, misunderstandings, and mistrust, that they may enjoy a renewal of love, healing, and peace this Advent season, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, that the healing power of the Holy Spirit may come upon them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, especially for Cody Dunn, Father Ron McIntyre, and for Teresa Tarrant, and for all who mourn the death of loved ones, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause for a moment to bow our heads and offer our own personal intentions.
For all of these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear the prayers that we offer you this morning, both those we have spoken aloud and those that are in our hearts, for they are offered through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way of eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who, walk, who, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, with the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body 
and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We are and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John the Baptist, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, be your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Through baptism we are God's children, and so with confidence we can pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace. him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am I'm not worthy that, that you should enter, enter under my roof, roof but only say, say the word and my, my soul shall, shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion, a prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you, for you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. To ensure that the reception of Holy Communion takes place in a safe and respectful manner, we ask that you please follow these instructions. Instead of individually replying Amen upon receiving the host, there will be one general attestation of Amen before distribution begins. Please remain standing in your pew until invited forward by an usher. Ensure your face mask is correctly worn before coming forward and maintain a two meter social distance in the communion line. As you approach the front of the line, sanitize your hands before receiving Holy Communion. Bow towards the host. In silence, receive the host in your hands. Step aside to consume the host. Return to your pew as directed by ushers. Those unable to receive Holy Communion in the hand may come forward to receive a blessing. The body of Christ. Amen. Chant 6.2 in Celebrate in Song, Dona Nobis Pacem.
to heal a broken world. Come feed your people, Jesus' bread of life. Jonah, no bees, pachem, pachem. Jonah, no bees, Jesus' cup of joy and laughter, foretaste here of heaven's bliss, drink of salvation, Jesus' cup of joy. Jonah, no bees, pachem, pachem, Jonah, no Jesus, Prince of Peace and Justice, make all people one in you. Gather your people, Jesus, Prince of Peace. Dona, no peace, pachem, pachem. Jesus, ruler of the nations, you who bid division cease, come now and save us, Jesus, Lord of all. Jonah, no peace, pachem, pachem, Jesus broken for our healing, Jesus sacrifice of love, come and redeem us, Jesus God's own Son, Jonah, no peace, pachem, pachem, Jesus, banquet feast of heaven, you who welcome sinners in, come now and feed us, Jesus, loving host. Jonah, no bees, pachem, pachem. Jesus' cup of joy and laughter, foretaste here of heaven's bliss, drink of salvation, Jesus' cup of joy. Jonah, no bees, pachem, pachem,
Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray, for even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to join with me in praying the prayer of Pope Francis to Mary for help and protection during the coronavirus pandemic. O Mary, you always shine in our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide, so that, as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection, we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. We have a special threefold blessing for the Advent season. May the Almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's Advent and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Our missioning chant number 315 in our CBW, the advent of our God. Advent of our God, with eager prayers we greet, and singing haste upon the road, His coming reign to meet. The everlasting Son came down to make us free. And he our servant's form put on to gain our liberty. O Sion's daughter, rise to meet your lowly king. Let not your faithless heart despise the peace he comes to. Bring.